up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome my name is Devin and I hope that you will consider sticking around and subscribing and if you're not new as always welcome back you know I love you so for today's video I have a little basket here full of empties slash things that I did not finish but I'm throwing out because I didn't particularly like them or whatever the case was so we are just going to be talking through this basically pile of trash that I've been hoarding for the past couple of months and I'm just gonna let you guys know what my experience was with these products and I apparently need to film this very quickly because my fiance just called me and told me that we're going out tonight when it's five o'clock on a Sunday night and I was fully prepared for a calm night in <laughs> So without further ado, if you want to talk about my trash, let's get right into it. Okay, so we are going really in no particular order, but I am going to try to go by category. So this really is mostly hair, skin, and body. I have one makeup item that I want to talk about, but this is mainly just all of my like non-makeup beauty empties, which kind of makes sense. I tend to go through those sort of products more quickly than my makeup products. I feel like that's probably true for most people. But anyway, we are going to start off in the hair category. So first up, I have two products from Bondi Boost. I definitely have talked about this conditioner and this like collection from Bondi Boost before. This is the Rapid Repair Conditioner. I went through another bottle of this. I also tested out their Rapid Repair Hair Mask for the first time and went through a full jar of this as well. Oh my gosh, these products because they've been sitting in my bathroom closet for so long are so dusty. So sorry if you guys can see the dust particles flying in my face. But basically this shampoo and conditioner combination have been my go-to for probably about a year. I just felt like when I first started using it that my hair felt really clean and really soft and shiny without feeling weighed down. I still have the sh some of the shampoo left in my shower. I go through like three bottles of conditioner for every <laughs> bottle of shampoo. So I definitely go through conditioner way more quickly. But I do think that my hair, you know how like you have to switch up your deodorant, you have to switch up your shampoo and conditioner and stuff like that after a while because your hair kind of like gets used to it. I feel like that did start to happen with this where like I would wash my hair and condition it and it would feel nice but like I wasn't feeling like it was as amazing as it was when I first started using this. So I felt like I just needed to switch to something else for a while, which I did, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But the reason that I like this again is because I do like things that are more hydrating for the hair. I have thick, coarse hair, so it does suck up product pretty easily. So I do have to find things that are hydrating without like moisturizing without weighing my hair down, which is kind of a delicate balance sometimes. So I do really like this. I think that my hair just kind of got used to it and it wasn't working as well as it was when I first tried it out. Now that being said for this hair mask. So the reason that I bought this was because my hairstylist told me that because my hair is so thick that I really should consider just using a hair mask to condition my hair instead of using a conditioner because it sucks up so much of the product that it just need might need something a little bit thicker to really condition my hair. She said that she felt like for me only using a regular conditioner would kind of just be like a second shampoo for my hair. So I listened and I picked up this hair mask. That being said, for as much as I like the shampoo and conditioner combo of this range, I do feel like this hair mask was a little heavy. Like when I was using it every time I wash my hair as my conditioner, I do feel like my hair was getting a little weighed down and a little greasy. When I started using it like every other wash or every third wash, I didn't notice that as much. So I liked this and I definitely used it up, but because it weighed, it felt like it weighed my hair down a little bit, I'm gonna give this like a like it don't love it not running to repurchase it if that makes sense so this shampoo and conditioner again I've repurchased it several times but this hair mask in particular I wouldn't necessarily run to order again okay 
So when I ran out of my conditioner, I was kind of in a pinch and waited too long. Like I didn't prepare and I ran out of it and didn't have backup. So I had to run out to Target and just grab what I could find. So I grabbed the Eva NYC Main Magic Conditioner and Shampoo Combo. Again, I go through conditioner three times as fast literally as I go through shampoo. So I have already gone through one bottle of this conditioner. I have seen a ton of the beauty bloggers that I follow talk about this brand, about this like range specifically, and I've seen a lot of good reviews. That being said, I also have really liked this shampoo and conditioner combo. Kind of for the same reason as why I liked this combo when I first started testing it out. I feel like my hair feels smoother, it feels soft, it feels shiny, it feels maybe a little bit less frizzy, but as you guys can see, I'm a frizzy girl. I have a hard time with taming my frizz, especially living in Florida. It's humid here. It's April, heading into May. Like, we're heading into the heat, <laughs> the heat, heat of Florida summer soon, so... It's just, there's moisture in the air all the time. It's human here all the time. Um, but I do feel like this helps with frizz a little bit. And again, I just feel like my hair felt clean, soft, smooth, shiny, but without feeling weighed down, which is really important to me because I am like trying to figure out how I can kind of like boost my volume at the roots because my hair is so thick, it can be heavy and it can get weighed down easily. So I have really been liking this combination. This is still in my shower. This is still what I'm using when I shampoo and condition my hair. So I have already repurchased another bottle of this conditioner as well. So if you need a good drugstore option for your shampoo and conditioner, I get it. Sometimes like you just don't want to spend 30 or $40 on a shampoo and conditioner when you go through it so quickly. Heard. Feel that. So I think this is a really good option. You can get it at Target. You can get it at CVS. I think that this is a pretty accessible product to get your hands on. So all good things there. Okay, so moving on to a product that I have not finished up, but I'm throwing out because I just decided that I did not like it and it didn't work for me, which is kind of disappointing because I do like a lot of things from this brand. This is another drugstore hair care brand. It is the Not Your Mother's Clean Freak Dry Shampoo. I will say the good qualities about this is as you can see my hair is very dark and even though this is not a tinted dry shampoo it does not leave a white cast at the root of my hair. I feel like it absorbed and blended really quickly and I do feel like it did absorb my oils. It wasn't heavy in my hair. It didn't weigh my hair down but the reason that I am throwing this out is because it made my scalp itch to the high heavens. I don't know what it is in here, but it was like, you know, sometimes you want to go one, maybe two days. Like you try to stretch your dry shampoo days to more than one day sometimes. And I just couldn't do that with this because my scalp was so freaking itchy to the point where like it was distracting. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't like, it just, it was, it was very uncomfortable. So again, I'm not exactly sure what the ingredient is in this that made my scalp so itchy, but I just got to the point where I was like, I, I can't use this anymore because I can't stand how uncomfortable it is. So yeah, unfortunately, again, I like a lot of stuff from this brand. I think this is a great drugstore hair care brand. I mean, I'm not a hair care expert, so take it with a grain of salt when I say that, but just in the experience, in my experience of the products that I've used from this brand, I've had good luck. I really like their Beach Babe Sea Salt Texturizing Spray, especially in the summer. So that kind of sucks, but yeah, didn't work out for me and I'm throwing it out. <laughs> Okay, moving on to some body care stuff. So I have four products in a stack right here. Um, they're all the same. <laughs> they're all the same like product, just different scents. But these are the Tree Hut Exfoliating Body Scrubs. So the short answer is that I absolutely love this product. It's cheap, it's drugstore, it has amazing smells. It works great to exfoliate my self tan off and it just exfoliate my body in general. I have this big one. This is, I just finished this up today as I was preparing to apply the self tan that I have on right now. This is the peach sorbet scent. It smells so delicious. It smells exactly like peach ring candy, which is like one of my favorites. I love gummy, sugary, kind of sour candy like that. So um, it definitely makes me want candy every time I use this in the shower, but I haven't bought any peach rings because of it because I'm trying to be healthy, but it is a delicious experience in the shower, just like 
in terms of smell. But then I have these three right here. So my mom got these for me for Christmas, I think in my stocking or just as like a little, you know, Christmas gift set. So this was one of their holiday gift sets. So it came all three together. So we have the smell candy cane. This was the first one that I used all the way up. Smelled delicious. Smelled exactly like a sweet sugary peppermint candy cane. Delicious. Then we had frosted cranberry. Again, delicious, fruity, sweet, beautiful. But then we have the scent Moroccan rose. And as you can see, this is still full. I think I used it once, maybe twice. I can't stand the smell of this. And it's funny, I love roses, but something about the smell of rose, like if it's in a beauty product like this, I can't handle it. I am definitely a sugary, sweet smelling girl, much more than a floral. I know some people lean towards florals, some people lean towards like musky smells, some people lean towards sweet. I definitely lean towards like a fresh sweet smelling scent so this is just too much for me I felt like I couldn't use this in the shower something about the steam in the shower I feel like amplifies the smell as well and this just was like very florally headache inducing for me so I have to get rid of this it's just because of the smell everything else about this product I love I would highly recommend if you've never tried these um, as a body scrub pick out a scent you like and you will not regret it. But this just smelled so strong. I just couldn't, I couldn't. So I'm throwing that out even though I really like that product. <laughs> okay, and then we have a self tanning product. So this is the Bondi Sands Aero Ultra Dark Self Tanning Foam. This is not the Express. This is just the regular four to eight hours or six to eight hours or whatever it is. And this actually is not all the way empty. I feel like I could get another tan or two out of this. But the thing about self tans and the reason that I'm throwing this out is because you really can't keep a bottle of tan open for very long. Like I really feel like you got to use these puppies up and three to six months, max six months, because otherwise they just start to go funny and like the t color doesn't get as dark and it doesn't work as well. And sometimes the color changes and it goes green or gray and it just doesn't look right. So I did start to experience that with this more towards the beginning of this year. Again, I don't know how long ago it was that I filmed my video on this at this point, but I've had this bottle since that time. And I was testing out a bunch of tans, so I had a bunch open at the same time. And I just don't think that's a good idea. I think that you have to, like whatever tan you're using, use up that bottle and then move on to the next tan because I've had to throw a couple tans out because I left them open too long and they just went funny. So I love this. I have a full review and wear test on it. If you're interested, I will put it in a card or link it below. But I do really like this as a tanning product. I just am throwing it out before it's empty because I did find that didn't work as well after having it open for several months. So keep that in mind with your tans. Um, like I said, I had to throw a couple out for that reason. So that's that. <laughs> that's my ramble on that. <laughs> okay, let me talk about my one little makeup item that I have used all the way up first. And then we will round this video out with skincare because I have a bunch of skincare items to talk about. So this is my elf power grip primer. As you can see, I have used it as much as I possibly can. There's still a tiny bit left in there. I suppose I could cut this open and use it all up, but I was having trouble pumping it out. So it's time. I have used this in several videos. I have used this almost every time that I've done my makeup since I bought this. I, long story short, really love this primer. This is my exact favorite type of makeup primer. It is juicy. It's a little bit sticky. It's definitely gripping. It is not silicone-y. I do not like super silicone-y hilly primers, if you know what I mean. Like, I, I feel like you guys know what I'm talking about. Those just, mm, I don't like them. I would much prefer like a plump, juicy, hydrating, you know, water-based primer, basically. So that's what this is. I do feel like it hydrates the skin. It grips my makeup on. It gives some longevity to my makeup. And I will definitely repurchase this. I actually already did repurchase this. So if you have not tried this, run, don't walk. Fantastic makeup primer. Highly recommend. So let's talk about skincare for a second. So staying on the e.l.f 
wagon for just a minute. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. Again, long story short, I really like this. This is a really good affordable option for taking your makeup off. The only thing that I will say that I noticed about this is that if I used too much or if I rubbed a little bit too much around my eyes, it did sting my eyes a little bit, which, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid like if you're taking your makeup off especially eye makeup you do have to use this around the eye area of course you always want to be careful when you're using any product around your eye area because it's a sensitive part of the face and we want to take care of our eyes but yeah for all intents and purposes i really like this i bought this jar when i was home for the holidays because i had forgotten to take home whatever makeup remover I was using at the time, which I can't even remember at this point. But I ran to Ulta when I was back in Pennsylvania for the holidays and picked this up for myself. And that's kind of when I started testing it out. And the other thing about this too, is I actually ended up buying a jar for my dad because he dressed up as the Grinch over Christmas time. And my mom actually painted his face to look like the Grinch. So he had a full face of green face paint on. And I guess my mom did a practice run on him and he literally gave himself a rash on his face by the amount that he was scrubbing trying to get the face paint off when they did the practice run because he wasn't using a makeup remover he was just using a washcloth and water and as a makeup artist and just like a beauty lover i was like oh dad <laughs> that hurts me so much that you did that to your face so when the occasion came that he was actually dressing up as the grinch i was like here i got this for you i'm going to show you how to use it so we can take your makeup off without giving yourself a rash <laughs> and so i showed him how to use this i was like just scoop it out rub it in between your fingers like rub it on your face and then see how easily it comes off with your wash your wet washcloth and he was like he couldn't believe it <laughs> I like blew his mind he was like oh my gosh that came off so much easier I can't believe that and I was like yes there are products made so that you don't have to scrub your face with a warm washcloth to get things off <laughs> Anyway, so my dad really liked this too. But yeah, great option for a cleansing balm makeup remover type of product at the drugstore. You know, we love e.l.f. They just, they rock. Okay, and then lastly for e.l.f., I have the Holy Hydration Lip Mask. This is another thing that I am throwing out even though I did not use it all the way up. I just, you know, I have my Laneige lip mask. My mom puts one in my and my sister's stocking every year so, and they last about a year. So that is pretty much what I use just all the time. And this really didn't hold a candle to it. One, it doesn't smell as good. It doesn't really, doesn't really have a flavor like the Laneige ones do, which I love. But the other thing about it is that, whereas I feel like I can tell that the Laneige one actually absorbs into my lips, this one I felt a little bit more like it kind of just sat on top of my lips and I didn't get as much hydration from it as I would want from a lip mask. So I really wanted to like this because, you know, we love a good affordable drug, drug store. <laughs> Mm. We love a good affordable drugstore option, but uh, this just wasn't it for me. So that was a bummer. Okay. And then next I have another lip mask. Actually, this is the strawberry overnight lip mask from fourth ray beauty. So as you can see, I use this quite a bit actually, mainly because I was just trying to use it up. And again, not a bad product. I would say if I had to pick one between these two, I would go for the fourth ray over the elf one. But Laneige still wins out over this one as well. I just, in comparison to that one, again, the Laneige one is a little bit more high end. It's a little bit more expensive. I have not compared the ingredients, but I would imagine that it would have like maybe slightly better ingredients in it or whatever that would make it a little bit more expensive, but it's okay. And if you don't want to spend like $20 on a lip mask, definitely a good option. I think this is probably around 10 or 12 um, <laughs> as I throw it, liked it, didn't love it, I guess I would say about this one. Okay, next up, I have a lash serum. This is the Grande Lash MD, and I believe this is the jumbo size as well. So this lasted me for quite a bit. I would say probably like nine months, definitely more than six. This works like a charm to help your lashes grow longer and thicker. I definitely notice a difference when I'm using this. I have gone through about two or three bottles of this, 
so I really like it overall but the only thing about it is that I do find if I use a little bit too much like if I get too much on the brush and swipe it on my lash line it does sting my eyes a little bit and I don't love that because it is a lash serum and it is therefore used close to the eye area so again I have repurchased this several times it does really work but I actually did purchase a different lash serum from a different brand this time around because I would like to find something that doesn't burn my eyes if I can so I like it but I want to see if I can find something that I like better all right Next up, I have my all-time favorite eye cream. <laughs> this is the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. Pretty cut and dry here. It's literally just that. It's an eye gel. It helps with puffiness. I really, in like my moisturizers and my eye creams and stuff like that, I like things that are more of a gel consistency as opposed to a creamy consistency. So I really like this. There's nothing really fancy about it, but it just kind of does what it's supposed to do. It's hydrating, it's easy to apply, it absorbs fairly quickly. Again, I feel like I bought this because I heard a lot of the bloggers that I follow talk about it and I do really like it. It's my go-to and it's affordable. Um, so there is another one in an Ulta package on its way to me right now because I really like it. So <laughs> definitely if you want just kind of like a no fuss affordable eye, um, eye cream, definitely try this out. Next up, I have this hydrogel cream from Honest Beauty. This was weird. <laughs> Plain and simple. Again, as I was just saying, I do like something in a moisturizer that's more of like a gel consistency as opposed to a cream consistency, at least for like daytime. So I was very much expecting this to be more of a gel moisturizer than a cream. It's called Hydro Gel Cream. So I guess it's kind of, that's kind of confusing to know what to expect from it. So it says in the how to use me, massage me into your face and neck and feel me burst into liquid form, quenching the skin like a tall glass of water. So it does do that, but it feels very weird. It's a cream consistency when you dig it out of the jar, but then as you start to rub it, I guess this is like the effect that it's supposed to be where it's like turning into a water consistency but it just feels like it's disappearing. Like it feels like you got something in your hand and then you went to put it on your face and it disappeared as opposed to like absorbing into your skin. Do you know what I mean? I felt like it made it, it, made it very hard to rub in because I felt like it was just disappearing and I couldn't tell where I had rubbed it in, where I needed more and stuff like that. So it was just a weird like sensory experience for me, I guess. And I had a hard time with it. And because I felt like it was disappearing, I felt like I had to really use a lot of this, like a lot more than I would normally use to like get my full face and neck moisturized. So and this wasn't cheap. It was like 30 bucks, I think, at Target. So I was disappointed with this. I would not repurchase it. Again, it was just kind of like a weird experience for me, and it wasn't what I was expecting, so I didn't really like it. Okay, ending on a positive note here, I have two mini products from Glow Recipe. I really like Glow Recipe as a brand. Everything is related to like a fruit or a food. They have great packaging, great colors, and I just, I like things like that. So in terms of like a gel moisturizing cream that I did really like. I really liked this one. So this is the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. So this I felt like gave me what I wanted out of like a gel cream moisturizer. Tons of hydration, absorbed well into my skin, almost had, I don't want to say tackiness because it's not sticky, but almost had that same feeling of like a hydrating makeup primer where you feel like if you put makeup directly on top of it, your makeup would last longer and I didn't feel like I had to use so much of it. I didn't feel like it was disappearing into thin air as I was trying to apply it like I did with this one. So I only bought the mini of this from Sephora to try it out, but I definitely would repurchase this. I do really, really like it. And then I have this little mini. So again, Glow Recipe and it is the Watermelon Pore Tight PHA and BHA toner. Again, I really like this. I can be sensitive to toners, number one, and I can be sensitive to toners or like products with acids in it. But uh, so I kind of like to tread lightly, but um, I really did well with this. I felt like for the first week or so that I was using it, it did kind of resurface and bring some impurities to the surface of my skin and I did break out a little bit. But then once I was consistently using it, I felt like my skin was definitely 
consistently smoother, consistently brighter, consistently clearer, honestly. And I really did like this. So I would definitely purchase the full size of this. And I like that it's kind of pore tightening and pore clearing too, because I do have large pores on my nose and on my cheeks here and kind of just in the center of my face that do get clogged up pretty quickly. So I am constantly doing like clay masks and Biore strips and stuff like that to try to decongest my pores. So I was really happy with the results I saw from this as well. Ending on a high note. All right, you guys. So with all of that being said, that is going to be it for this empties slash things I'm throwing out that didn't work for me video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know your thoughts below. Have you tried any of these products? Did they work for you? Did they not work for you? You know, different things work for different people. So I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for products that you've tried in these categories, like a great gel moisturizer that you love, a great self tan that you love, great dry shampoo, body scrub, whatever let me know. Let's chat in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. If you have made it this far and you have not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and you can also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads from me. And like I said, leave me a comment, like this video if you found it helpful. All of those things are small little interactions, but they really do help out in the YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate you. It does support me in that little tiny way. So with all that being said, I will catch you guys in my next one. Love you. Bye.